Hi, I'm Andrew Leroy. I'm a senior instructor in the engineering program at Dunwoody College of Technology. And today we're going to create a simple drawing from the part that we previously created in SolidWorks. So let's go ahead and get started in doing that. Okay, so in the last tutorial we created this part. Now in this tutorial we're going to create a print from this part. And the steps required to do that are as follows. The first thing I need to do is save my parts. So I'm going to go to the File menu, select Save by left-clicking on it. I'll get this dialog box that comes up. I'm going to save this to my SolidWorks folder. I'm going to name the part Demo 110. And you'll notice I type that in the category where it says File Name. This is my part number. I'm going to add a description to the part down here and I'll just simply call it block with hole. And this will populate into my drawing automatically so I won't have to do as much editing as I would have if I didn't do it this way. So again, part number is in file name. The description of the part is block with hole. So I'll just save that. And unless I save my part, SolidWorks won't recognize it uh, in order to put it into a drawing. So now that it's saved, I'm going to go up to this new document icon, select new, and this time I'm going to select drawing. So I'll left click on the drawing and say OK. And in this case, what I want to do is select the B landscape, so I'll make sure that that's highlighted. Make sure display sheet format is also selected. And then the next step is just to click on the OK button. It recognizes that I have the other part open, but at this point I don't want to put any views of that part in yet. So I'm going to click on the red X, close that dialog. And then I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to select Options. Because what I want to do is set up my document properties just like I did for the part. So the first thing I need to do is select Document Properties on the tab up above. And instead of ISO, I would like that to be ANSI. And then I'm going to go down and select the Units bookmark. And I want to make sure that I have Inch, Pounds, Seconds selected. So I'll make sure that radio button is selected. The Length units, I want to be three place. If they're not three place, again, I can just click on the drop down, select the three place units, and that will come up. The angular dimensions, I want to be full degrees, so I'm going to select none. So again, if it's not selected, click on the drop down, select none. And once you've done those two, that's all you need to do. You don't have to pay any attention to the millimeters or the length for the mass section properties because we're not using those at this point. So now just select the OK button. It'll bring you back into your drawing document. Now we're going to add a view. So I'm going to go up here and on my command manager I'm going to select the view layout tab. And we'll start by just putting in one view. So I'm going to select model view. Now I get that same dialog I had before and you can see that our demo part is here. So if I double click on that and if I bring my cursor over into the graphics area, the box is essentially a view of the part that I just created. And it should be the front view, so I'll left click to place that. And once I've placed that, then all I have to do is, without pressing any buttons, just move my cursor over to the right. And now I get the right hand view of the part, so I'll left click one time and place that. And again, I'll go back and just drag my cursor up above the part and left click to place the top view. And then lastly, if I go up at about a 45 degree angle, I get an isometric view. And I won't be able to place that entirely on the sheet right now, so I'll just move it out a little ways, left click, and now I'll have the views placed that I want. Now in order to get out of the view tool, I'll just hit escape. And now the views are all projected, so the front view is the first view that we put in. So the right-hand view and the top view are now projected from the front view, which means that the front view controls those views. And if I grab that dotted edge around the views, you can see I can move those. 
and the other two views will follow the front view. The isometric view is uh, free, so I can move that any place I want. So I'll just move it where I think it fits the best. And maybe I'll just move this right hand view over a little bit, give myself a little more room. Now that I've selected uh, the right hand or this isometric view, I also want to change the display style. So instead of having these hidden lines showing on the part, I like my views to be just in a wireframe or a solid view. So I'm going to go over here under the drawing view dialog and I can select hidden lines removed. So I can do it right here or I could also do it from this overhead menu. If I click on this drop down, I get hidden lines removed. And the third one is down. If I select that with my left mouse button, you can see it takes away all the hidden lines. So two more things we need to do. The first one is to add center marks and center lines. And in order to do that, I'm going to go to the Annotations tab in my Command Manager. And I'm going to select the Center Line tool up here to the upper right. And once I have that selected, all I need to do is hover over uh, the dotted line that surrounds the view. And if I click on it, it'll place the center line in that view. So I'll do it for both views. And then I'll just go over and click on the OK or the green check mark. So now I have my views. And the last thing I'm going to have to do before I import my dimensions is so if I right click anywhere on the sheet, and select Properties. I get this dialog box. tells me the sheet. gives me the scale of the sheet. And I want to make sure that I'm using third angle projection because that's what we use in the United States. Europe and Japanese countries use first angle projection. If I wanted to change the size of my sheet, I could do that here also. But for now, we're just going to choose third angle. And I think maybe I'll make those views a little bit smaller. So uh, for the scale, let's choose 0.75 to 1. And I'll select OK. And that'll make everything just a little bit smaller than what it was. Give me a little more space to add my dimensions. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do to add the dimensions is to go to the Insert menu. And I'll left click on that one time. My first choice is Model Items. So I'll select that. And once I do, I get a dialog box over here in the Feature Manager. And where it says Selected Feature, I want to select the drop-down button and say Entire Model. And then if I scroll that down a little bit under Annotations, we'll select All. And once I've done that, I'm prepared to import the dimensions that I use to create the model into my drawing. And if I was careful when I created the model and put the dimensions in the right location, that should make putting them into the drawing very simple. So I'm going to click on the green check mark. The dimensions that I use to create the drawing are popped in. You can see there's some overlap. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And I'll just do that by left clicking on the dimension and moving it a little bit further out away from the part. Ideally, I want to have 5 eighths of an inch between the first dimension and my part. And then I want to have 3 eighths of an inch between the dimensions after that. So the first dimension is 5 eighths. The second, third, or fourth dimension should be 3 eighths, the space between them. And the largest dimension should always be on the outside. The smaller dimension should be on the inside. If I didn't do it that way, you can see that it would be kind of messy because I'd get a lot of crossover in areas that I don't want it. So for clarity and quality, I want to keep the smaller dimensions closer to the part and the larger dimensions further away from the part. So again, 5 eighths for the first dimension and then 3 eighths for the dimension after that. The diameter dimension, I can move around, put it in a location that is a little better suited. This is a smaller hole, so I don't want uh, my dimension arrows to be going across the inside of the circle. And if I have the dimension selected, all I have to do is uh, left click on this little green dot. And now my arrow will be on the outside of the circle. If I use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out, uh, I can see I need the thickness of my part. That's located in this view. 
So if I look at the, drews, the views that I've created on my drawing, I have my front view, the right hand view, and the top view. Well, I probably don't need both the top view and the right hand view because the only information that I'm getting from them is the thickness of the part. But I would like to keep my right hand view and probably eliminate the top view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key down and then I'm going to left click on my two inch dimension and hold my left mouse button down and drag it down to the right hand view and when I let go it'll transfer that dimension to that view. So again I'm going to place that 5 eighths of an inch away from the part and now I can select my top view and then I'll select the delete key on the keyboard and that will eliminate that view for me. If I press the F key that will center my drawing and when I look at it I can look at the title block and I can see that um, where I, I put the description of the part if I use my mouse wheel and scroll into that it's too large for the area that I want it to fit in so in order to correct that if I right click anywhere on the sheet and choose edit sheet format what happens is my views disappear and now I have this blue outline of my title block which indicates I'm in an editing mode so now I can edit this so if I double click on the title I get a toolbar that comes up and using this toolbar I'm going to change my font size and I think if I change it to 20 it should be small enough to fit very well in there so then I can just click again anywhere in the drawing and that toolbar will turn off and that's a good size so I'll leave that there uh, the next thing I want to do is fill in some of these places and it's not too hard it's the same thing you need to be in the editing mode and for example if I want to put my initials in here when I hover over the square where my initials would go or the date you can see the cursor changes to an A and having that A indicates that there is a text box there so if I left click on that A and then double click now I can put in the text my initials and then if I go over to the date box do the same thing double click and today is uh, the 16th 12 16 09 and I'll just click outside that hit escape and I can do the same thing with my tolerance information uh, my material information uh, anything that didn't populate from the model I can go in and, and edit it and to get out of editing mode here all I have to do is right click and say edit sheet now the blue lines are gone my views came back if I press the F key on my keyboard it zooms out so I can see the entire drawing so I'm finished I've placed my dimensions I've placed my center marks I've placed my views in the locations that I want them to be so the last thing I have to do is save my drawing so I'll go to file save the name is correct demo 110 description isn't necessary this time so I'm just going to say save well, that's uh, creating a simple drawing. If you have any further questions, go ahead and contact me or contact one of the tutors in the Elfman Center. Thank you for your attention. Have a great day.